Hello developers, today we are going to build a student's grade predictor. By the end of this video, you will have a working model that you can customize and use in your own projects. This predictive analytics kit provides analytical view of students' performance in mathematics and predicts the grade to be scored in the final test. The key features of this solution are analysis of grades of students, visualization of patterns, prediction of grade in final test. You will also build a similar solution today. We'll be using a candy kit to build this solution. Now what is a candy kit? Candy one click install kit gives you ready to deploy solution with a complete source code. You can access many more such ready to use candy kits on augmented reality, artificial intelligence, blockchain, gaming and many more on candy. Today we'll be using a popular candy kit on students grade predictor one click install kit. Now this kit is open source with a permissive license that means you can freely edit, customize and share your own solution. Let's get started then. Over to you Balaji for a hands-on walkthrough. Hello, hope you're excited to build your own student grade predictor. To build a student grade predictor, we need libraries to analyze our data and to build a model for prediction. Then we need a data set for training and validation of the model. And then we need another unseen data set for running our testing. Everything that you need is available in the candy kit. Let's start by installing the candy kit. Check out the description to find the link to the installer. This will set up a working sandbox application with all the needed resources and prerequisites. You can download the installer here and you can follow the instruction here to set it up. You may now pause this video to finish the installation process. Once you're ready, hit the resume button. We'll jump right into building the student grade predictor. Great, hope you all set. If you have successfully set up, you'll see this Jupyter notebook. Let's take a closer look at this notebook. First up, we have to import the libraries that are needed to analyze our data and to build a model. And then we initialize a bunch of variables that includes location of training data set, location of prediction data set, and the location where the predicted file needs to be written to. And then we have a detailed description of the data set that we are going to use, which we can refer to while previewing the data. So here is the preview of data and we see that there are 649 records and about 33 features that are present in our data set that includes features like the school where the student studies in and the gender of the student, age of the student and address of the student, whether the student comes from the urban area or the rural area and what's the family size of the student whether it's greater than three or less than or equal to three, and what's the status of parents and so on and so forth. So we have totally 33 features in our data set, of which we need to choose what is the target variable. So as we are going to predict the grades of final test, which is G3, our target variable is going to be G3. And then we also need to tell what are the features that are numerical in nature? If you look at the data set, most of the features are categorical in nature, except these three features, which are G1, G2, that stands for grades of first test and grades of second test, and then age of the students. Then we call the method train of the model by passing all these informations like the training file target variable and what are the numerical features. And this will train the data set on a broad spectrum of models and they are evaluated on evaluation metrics such as mean absolute error, mean squared error, root mean squared error, root mean squared logarithmic error, mean absolute percentage error, and importantly, a squared which stands for coefficient of determination that tells us what proportion of variability of dependent variable is explained by independent variables. And therefore, we sort all the models based on the R squared to identify what's the best performing model. By this metrics, we see that elastic net regression model is the best model 
and therefore we finalize the best model and save the model in the directory. Once the model is saved, we load the model and we make prediction by calling this spread method from model. And that will write a prediction file in output.csv file, which can be previewed by executing this cell. And here we can see that the prediction is quite good because the grades of the predicted value is almost the same as the actual grade values. You now have a working student grade predictor. Let's now look at how you can customize this solution. We initialize the variables as usual. However, this time we load a different data set, which is studentmath.csv. That's going to contain math grades of students. We preview the data and we set the target variables and numerical features as usual. Then we are going to call the method train from the model by passing the input train file, target variable, and numerical features. This time around, we see that K nearest neighbor regressor has outperformed all the models in the spectrum because it has got really good R squared value, which is about 0.9. And therefore, we are going to finalize this model and save this model. Once it is saved, as usual, we load it and we make prediction on the testing file and the output is written to output.csv file. When we preview the output.csv file, we see that the predicted grades of students are pretty much the same as the actual grades of the students in the subject math. That's it. Congratulations. You now have a working student grade predictor that you can customize for your application. Hope you found this session useful. Using Candy Kids is a great way to build AI predictive engines. You can find link to the student's grade predictor kit and many other ready to use kits in the description below. Head over to Candy to build incredible projects on AI, augmented reality, blockchain, gaming and many more. Try out Candy Kids now. Hit that subscribe button and join us at the Open Weaver community of developers to learn more and build many more incredible projects. Thank you for watching this session. Till the next one. Bye bye.